My talk today is on the birth and youth of Jesus. Today I'll discuss uh, bits and parts of three main topics. Uh, the lo Logos to birth to the boyhood of Jesus. And we talk about the God was upon him. We talk about Jesus, a son of the law. We talk about training up the child and the environment that he grew up in about how he was advanced in wisdom, and then the question that we're all asking, all of, our, all of us who read the Reader's Digest, I'm dating myself there, uh, why is there so little written about Jesus' youth in the Bible? Um, I'll start with, I, I, I don't think you can start to talk about the birth of Jesus without first going into his pre-existence. We know this pre-existence from the Bible in several places. In John 1.1, 1, 1, we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without nothing um, was made that has been made. In him was life, and life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness. And the, the darkness has not overcome it. And then in 9, that was uh, 1, 2, 5, excuse me. And then in 9, we read, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He, and it says, He was in the world, and the world, and through the world was made, and excuse me, He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. In 12, and to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. And in 15, we read, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He, we have seen his glory, the glory of one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. What does God, what does John refer to here? He is connecting Jesus as the Word of God, as the as the logo with. He is connecting Jesus with the Word of God as the logo. What's interesting is it says that everything was made through Him. So I've always marveled how Jesus in the pre-human form was God's master builder. And through that role, the entire universe was made. And, uh, you know, that, that, would, that would include building the star that would one day announce his arrival on earth. He came as the man, Jesus Christ, of all, and also the savior of all mankind. What a connection throughout eons and millennium that must have been. So that's the Logos part. Now let's get into the birth. In Matthew 2, we, we, we read, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Two, we read, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard all these things, he was troubled. Jerusalem with him, and he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He demanded them where Christ should be born. He told them in Bethlehem. For six we read, And now Bethlehem, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Herod was worrying about was worried about being overthrown by this, by this little child. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. In 8 we read, and he sent them to Bethlehem, and he asked that they bring him word so that, that Herod may come and worship him also. Herod was lying. They came, and, and when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw on the east before them, until they came, stood over where the young child was. And it says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, and and 11, they, we, we, we read, uh, and when they uh, were come to the house, they saw the young child with his merry mother, and they fell down and worshipped him, and they had opened their treasures. 
and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in the country their own way. They left, they didn't go back to Herod to tell where the baby Jesus was. And they were parted the Lord. And when they were departed, behold, the, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, Jesus' the stepfather. In a dream, it said, Arise, take the young child to end his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod. Uh, before I bring thee word for Herod, will seek the young child to destroy him. But there's a couple warnings already. The parents have got. Um, think about that with regard to the lack of information about Jesus' youth. How angels go up to his parents saying, "Don't we need to leave this place because the the, the king's going to kill him." We have wise men sent there by a, by a by a person who wanted to kill him, and they didn't go. They went back. If your child is in danger, you're not going to be you're not going to be granted. I mean, look how good my child is. So there was a natural a natural hiddenness to Jesus' youth. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but in 14, we read when excuse me, I got on my place. In 14, we we, we read. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night. They departed into Egypt. And they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord uh, by the prophet, saying, Out of Jesus I have called my excuse me, out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and set forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which had diligently acquired a wise man. Seventeen, there were things fulfilled prophesied when Jesus was born. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel, weeping from weeping for her children, would not be comforted because they are not. When Jesus was born, he was went to a world whose rulers wanted him destroyed. As we read, as we just read in, in John, he was, born, he, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Jesus' birth, was also, uh, Jesus birth also produced many types, the, the types of the gifts. Wise men gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It created antitypes. It created prophecies. And it also had prophecies fulfilled. Um, that subject is a 10-day course in its own. I don't have enough time to go into all of those, but just know that all those things occurred. Um, I got the majority of my talk from Watchtower Reprint. 37, 10, pages 37, 10, 11, and 3290 to 3292. And specifically, what I'm going to look at is Luke 2, 40 to 52. Um, and I'd like to actually go in, into that. It's a very, very famous story about Jesus. And so uh, if you'll indulge me let, me, let me read through this just so we're all on the same page. So Luke 2, 3 to 52. The child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So now we're talking about Jesus growing up as a child. He's no longer a babe. One, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. They were devout religious people, and they followed the law. He was 12 years old. They went to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. They traveled for days to go to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And Jesus stayed. Where did he go? Number 44. But they, but they supposing to him to have been in the company, went on a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. When they found him not, they turned back from Jerusalem. One time we went to uh, my parents for, for dinner, and we left our son 
who was hiding in my in his grandfather's uh, study on the computer. And about two miles down the road, Arthur goes, hey, where's Sawyer at? Well, he was back at Grandma, so we had to go back and get him. Um, so I, I know what that feels like. Uh, and when they found, and they went, so so they, they went back to Jerusalem in 45. When they found him, they turned back to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the, of the doctors, both hearing them and asking the questions. Jesus was with the elders, listening to them talk about um, all, all, of the, all of the information that they had up to that point and asking them questions, the religious elders of that, of that, of that place. We said, all that heard him were astonished by his understanding and answers. He must have been asking questions and giving answers as well, and these people were astonished. Twelve-year-old boy being with um, Jewish religious um, leaders, asking, answering questions, part, probably part of the conversation, and all these folks were astonished by his abilities. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And another said to him, Son, why, how, why hast thou thus dealt with us? And behold, my father and I sought thee sorrowing. And he said to them, How is it that ye sought me? Must ye not know that I must be about my father's business? At that point, in tw- at 12 years old, he understood that he was the son of God. In 50, we, we read, and they, and they understood not the same what she said to them. Jesus at 12 understood it. Mary somehow didn't understand what he was saying. And when he went down to them and came to Nazareth uh, and was subject unto them, his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom. And th- this is an important one too, 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man increased in wisdom and stature and favor with both God and man. Um, talking to how he, must have, how, how he must have dealt with his, brother, with his fellow people. Okay, so let's get into this first, number 40, a little bit. Jesus was separate from sinners. He was developed in, a wis- in wisdom and physical strength, and he had none of the inherited blemishes that the other children, that any of us, that anyone you have ever known walking this planet, had within them. 40, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Pastor Russell writes, verse 40 declares that prior to his reaching his 12th year, he had been growing in stature and in strength and was gradually being filled with wisdom. We are not to forget that he was separate from sinners, nor to expect that other children at his age should manifest the same degree of wisdom. Quite the contrary, Inheriting blemishes, mental, physical, moral, they do not belong to the same class at all. Our Lord Jesus is not a pattern for the natural man. He was a perfect man all of his life, and this included childhood. None of us have ever seen such a, such, never has, has ever seen one such as Jesus. And all of the quote unquote growing pains that you would normally see in, in, a, in a child. Conversely, we would not have been there, and conversely, he would have developed at a different rate than what was ever seen before. In our story, we see his wisdom, we see his zeal for knowledge, 12-year-old, uh, amongst the, the elders and, and holding his own. We would have, and, and we would see the natural understanding, so he must have had a natural understanding of the spiritual things of his father, God. To that point, and specifically, and I think uh, Jack was talking about the, the the primary graces. There's a whole there's a whole several day symposium there as it is, and the grace of God was upon him. The word grace signifies which um, gives pleasure as loveliness of form or character or the most admirable virtues. Hence, the grace of God signifies His favor. Jesus as a child had that, and was such a one as the Father had pleasure in. God was favorable to Jesus, not like, a, like, not like he was favorable to, to, to other men who were fallen. Reversely, such as, 
such a one as reflected in his form and character of the grace, perfection, the beauty, which is of God. Jesus must have shown, his personality must have been so bright and, sh- and, and shining. Um, John, speaking of our Savior, says, We beheld his glory, the beauty of Jesus, only begotten of the Father. Jesus was holy and acceptable to the Father from infancy to manhood. We might, uh, we, uh, what might the grace of God appear like in a, per- in a person? In Titus 2, we read 11. In Titus 2.11, we, we read, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. In 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. To say it plainly, Jesus as a child was remarkable. And furthermore, the grace of God must have shown through his personality, acts, and his thoughts. So let's get into Jesus, son of the law, how he was advanced in wisdom, uh, how he, he, was, he was trained up as a, from a child, and how he lived in a religious in a favorable religious household. One of the many remarkabilities of Jesus was found in an earlier text. He shows uh, and and shows he was advanced in wisdom and was a a son of the law and no doubt raised in a favorable religious environment. When Jesus' mother had traveled back to Jerusalem looking for him, Jesus met Mary's admonishment with the explanation that he was about his father's business learning, asking, and answering questions in the temple with the religious elders. Under the Jewish custom, a boy at 12 was supposed to make himself a kind of consecration, some kind of special recognition of the law on account of which he was called, and on account of which he was called son of the law, a child of the law. The wisdom in which our Lord had been growing up to at that time, like all things pertaining to the Jewish system, was intimately interwoven with the law and the prophets. Jesus recognized himself at the age of 12, not being the son of Joseph, but the son of God, and knew he had come into the world on a special mission. And it was preliminary step, and it was the preliminary step on his part to gain wisdom respecting the work that was, that he was to do. And as it has, and had it, and as it had been outlined in the promise in the law, throughout the testimonies of the prophets. Jesus at 12 years old was far wiser than his years and shown by the utter astonishment of the elders in that verse 47. And all that heard him were astonished and his understanding at his understanding and answers. No doubt that God gave Jesus into a situation where he was able to train and learn for his eventual goal. In divine providence, our Lord was not only born under favorable religious influence, but trained in that way. Mary and Joseph being pious, reverent, and evidently disposed to to obedient to every feature of the divine law to the extent of their ability. Jesus being around this and taking trips um, to the feast of the Passover, was he was around these Jewish uh, traditions and had a great understanding. And not only that, had a zealous focus on the scriptures and teachings of his day. Uh, For anyone who was raised in the truth, you know you have a... um, you have a head start on other people and just your own understanding, right? That's just, a, that's just a known thing between all of us who are raised in the truth. Jesus is no different. The statement that Jesus progressed in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man in verse 52 relates to the period of his life from 12 upward until the time of his presentation to Israel in his 30th year as the Lamb of God. Like I said before, um, he was a person, uh, he, was, he was not a person like any other child or adult has ever been seen. And that is proved by the Satan that he grew in favor of both God and his fellow man. He was pleasing to God as well as the, the people who lived within his um, sphere. Okay, so why don't we know um, more about Jesus' childhood? 
there's a there's several good reasons. There's practical reasons. There's a proper timing out there, and there's an essential simplicity to God's word. And these are the three reasons that, that I'm going to talk about today. So um, th- let's get into the practical reasons. I alluded to it earlier in my in this talk. In Matthew 2, we read about how Herod wanted to destroy the babe Jesus, fearing he would eventually lose his power to Jesus. This seems like a good reason for his parents to keep a low profile. And that would probably shake some parents. And they would know. I mean, they have angels coming to them in dreams. You know, they, they, they know all these things. They, they, they know a, a gist of the story, but not the whole story. They have people coming after them. So you're not going to record a lot of, of these things that you're doing. You're going to keep those things hidden. From, uh, so from the beginning, Jesus' parents were warned by God to keep him in secret. And they must. And and this must have been both hard and easy on them. Hard because he was ever special, and keeping that light hidden must have been a task. But also easy because of that same specialness. Jesus must have been a joy to raise. Okay, proper timing. The next reason revolves around proper timing. Uh, Mary kept the things which she had heard and seen in her heart, pondering how they would develop. She kind of knew what was going on, but she didn't see the full picture. She was going through it. Um, and how the words of, a- of the angel Gabriel, Gabriel would be fulfilled in her son, Jesus. And Jesus also kept the whole matter a secret with himself up to the proper time when he entered publicly at the earliest moment upon his ministry. Undoubtable, un- undoubtable this was the course of wisdom. He was not yet, as a child, anointed to preach, and, and hence no authority to do so, and therefore held off from such activity. Um, we, weren't there to, uh, we weren't there to learn from, um, we weren't supposed to learn from the childhood of Jesus because it was not time for him to preach yet or to do God's work. So that's the timing portion. Essential simplicity. The final reason I share today is around essential simplicity. God in his wisdom only gives us the essentials. Everything in the Bible has a purpose, and that is just about as complicated as we can handle as it is. Pastor Russell writes, the more we think of it, the more marvelous it seems that the gospel narratives record so many of the particulars of our dear Redeemer's ministry, miracles, teachings, etc., yet never once descend into the discussions of commonplace events, nor of our Lord's sayings or doings, or other than those directly connected to his ministry. This is the one of the strongest internal evidences that these books were written under divine supervision. Our experiences with the writings of men in all ages assures us that it would be almost impossible for four men to write biographies of one person, such as these Gospels are, without entering into social features and events. Respecting our Lord's life, Previous to his consecration of 30 years of age, we scarcely know anything. The four Gospels merely bring attention to his miraculous birth, Herod's jealous theory, the escape of the child before the massacre of the innocent, followed by the little incident that, of, that was of our lesson today, which occurred at his 12th year, and the declaration that he increased in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. How brief the record, yet how suggestive. It would have been no part of the gospel to have explained the details of his life as a boy, as a young man, etc. It might indeed have satisfied the curiosity of some to have, to have told us whether he was a farmer or a fisherman, a carpenter, a um, matter about which people seem included to dispute, by the way. But undoubtedly, our Lord was this matter, our, the undoubtable, the Lord was in this matter the Lord's way was the better one. Our minds are more drawn to the important features of the Lord's work after his, um, after his um, baptism in the River Jordan um, by reason of the brevity and sketch given us of his earthly life and interest as a child. And I'll conclude by the important thing for us to know is simply stated namely that he was the beginning 
of creation of God, the firstborn of every creature, that in his pre-existing condition he had glory with the Father before the world was, and was the Father's instrument in the creation of the angels, principalities, powers, and men, everything that was made, the trans- and the transference of his great spirit went into an earthly human condition that he might become man and redeem man and the world. And I thank God for his blessing. <laughs>